What's up, everybody? It's the Mountain Sage. We get your daily dose of sage advice. So I wanted to make a quick Archange uh, meeting Archangel Michael Part Three highlights and signs and some of the things that were hard for me to reconcile in my experiences. So from the very beginning, it was just a this being was just a different being altogether. He was a peer, you know, he appeared to me as a peer, you know, early 20s, but with universal knowledge like I'd never encountered. He, uh, there'd be times I'd, you know, leave his house after a night of hanging out and, um, and having some really deep talks and uh, where he could just answer pretty much about any question I had. I slowly became aware of who I was talking to without him saying a thing. His eyes were bright, powerful. And when I'd leave sometimes, you know, he would he would tell me, you know, to look out here at this spot while I was driving, uh, you know, watch out. And surely enough, each time something would run across the road or whatever, right? around where he said to keep an eye out for it. One time he, he said that and I was, we had been talking all night, all night long and I had to bring my mother-in-law to work. And as we, as me and her drew, drove in the car, a rabbit ran across the, the road, the road, which was one of the stranger things we'd seen. Um, you know, usually it's possums or, you know, raccoons or deer. Um, anyway, and I said, you wouldn't believe what I just saw to him, I text him. I texted him because he was still in her good body. He had a little phone. And he said, a rabbit. I mean, come on. What are the chances he, he guesses a rabbit right off the bat? And I have an eyewitness that confirms that we saw a rabbit running in front of our vehicle. My mother-in-law. Um, one night I was leaving his house and an orb of light from his from right where his room was in the backyard an orb of light just lifts up and it lifts up into the sky and me at that time just being fresh out of the marine corps looking for a, a logical means of explanation i was i literally thought swamp gas and all the things i've been programmed to think about such events right i was a skeptic um At a certain point, you know, we were, he had, he brought his Bible out and he opened up the Bible and, uh, just immediately opened it up, pointed down to it without looking. And it said, Jacob, right? The prophet Jacob. And yeah. And then and I said, so who are you? Right. And he, without saying anything, opened it up, boom, straight down. No marker, no highlights, no bookmarks, fresh, you know, Bible, no folded pages, Boom. Michael. The Archangel Michael. And so I started getting this, you know, picture. That I would, I, I for some reason, or whatever, Yeshua ordered him, commanded him to come and enter into my life, intervene. Um, yeah, he did. And uh, we were with five people. One time I was driving and he was in the car. And I look over, and sure enough, out there in the country is a is a, a triangular space spacecraft, right? And I'm thinking maybe it's a plane, right? But no, it's silent. We stopped the vehicle right there on the road. We we're kind of in a back country road. Um, like I said, five people. We all saw it. It's a freaking triangular spacecraft, right? And I'm like, what the hell? Something that Michael uh, continuously, and even we'd watched together a little bit, was and he pointed me to was Ancient Aliens, uh, which is a quite a you know eye-opening documentary series. Definitely worth all of you watching. Um, and. So it's like, you know, some of these things are just extremely hard 
the human mind, especially in our society and the way we view these kind of extraordinary events, it's very extremely hard to reconcile. Um, so it took, took years of meditation and contemplation and uh, you know praying, looking through the scripture, seeing that angels do appear to people. They often warn of deaths or births. The prophet Elijah was brought up directly into heaven. My son Eli, he is most likely an incarnation of that prophet, just as I am an incarnation of the prophet Jacob. Um, but it's about the message. It's not about the people. Uh, you know, it's never been about glorifying the prophets. Even Jesus wasn't here to be glorified, but to glorify his father who sent him. Right? So we're all here to glorify God who sent us. Um, but it's, it's amazing. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't argue if, if I'm not completely crazy. And I know now after many years that I'm not, and I have many eyewitnesses. I had, I, you know, I made sure of that because I was concerned when this was all going down that I was, I was losing it. Maybe I was going crazy. You know, it's hard to believe. And then I thought, I saw the fruits of my life the last, over the last seven years. I mean, look where I am now. I saw the fruits of my life and they were all good. I got closer with Jesus, Yeshua. I got closer to Christ. I became more, Christ's light filled me more and shined out of me more. We started eating better, started eating organic and natural, just, he never told me to, but it just started naturally looking for, to, to, to get back to the simpler ways, get back to the way we lived in the Garden of Eden. And obviously, I'm not saying our organic food's perfect, but it is better. It's better than what you can get. And it's about changing how businesses conduct themselves, right? It's about stopping the use of excessive ingredients, artificial ingredients, you know, poisoning the land with toxic pesticides, poisoning the earth, right? It's an effort that, we're, that consumers are making to change how corporations behave. The thing we have to realize is that corporations, they do what they're told by the consumers. And if the consumers fall asleep, they're allowed to stray and find cheaper ways to do things because that's such is the nature of business. But um, the biggest message reiterated a couple times is that we are at the end and and I asked him, you know, am I going to be lifted up, you know, with you or, you know, am I going to be picked up? And he told me yes, you know, that I was already saved. Um, he also told me I had, you know, he had, he had a battle, he had a, a war to fight somewhere else and that I had a battle that I had to fight here and at war. And I just didn't understand. I was like, well, where are you going? You know, and what war do I have to fight? So it, uh, and obviously and now I know the war I fight is the war of ignorance, you know, the war against the spiritual forces of darkness, right, upon the earth. And, um, and, you know, I've been battling demons and truly, and, you know, in spirit and, uh, and dream and, um, exor exercising demons from people, um, uh, mostly in spirit and sometimes in the physical and it's a true battle one dream i had we were here and right at the cabin and um and satan had surrounded the cabin with demons and this felt so real you know it's just it was exactly like you know looked exactly like the you know this you know real life looked exactly like it is here and they surrounded our cabin and uh they were coming for our magic bunny apparently <laughs> and um and you know probably for my son and to attack us and anyway and so we you know we weren't giving anything up and so we they started crashing in the windows and everything and me my son my wife we picked up <laughs> our weapons and we were fighting and battling these demons and at a certain point, at a certain point, they, you know, we had, we had, we had won, um, after we were just fighting, you know, to the death, basically, against all these demons. But, um, by God's strength, by God's glory, uh, we had overcome them, and they stopped working for Satan. But, um, but just, these are some of the examples of just the kind of mighty spiritual, uh, warfare I'm engaged in on a constant basis. 
Um, and the the most the, some of the biggest things was that he got, uh, Archangel Michael helped to restore my relationship with my wife. Helped he helped me overcome my anger issues I had after leaving the Marine Corps. He helped me, um, you know, with so much. Uh, just to restore myself in God and Christ in me. And he foretold of the coming of my son three months before our son was born. Which to me was so undeniable. The second my wife, I was at work and selling vacuums, and my wife called me and said, did four pregnancy tests are all positive. In that moment, I just knew immediately I was having a son. Partly because he told me, but it was a feeling, you know, a, a sure not a knowing that I was having a son. And sure enough, I was. And I didn't doubt it. At, there's no doubt at all. There's, there's no doubt. Doubt was gone. And I knew. And I think that was probably when I first fully realized that I had truly met the Archangel Michael, uh, our great friend. Uh, he was very humble. He never asked me to worship him. He was a very humble guy. Um, he, he is, and he appeared to a Marine in the Korean War. He appeared to uh, some soldiers, I believe, in World War I. And he also appeared to uh, Joan of Arc, of all people, who I believe was burned at the stake because of it, because she told who she had met, you know. Um, anyway, so these are some of the highlights and the signs that I was shown. And I've had many dreams, many prophetic dreams. One dream where Mount Hood here in Oregon, God said something like, Mount Hood will bound to the sea, right? And these are just like, where do you where do you come up with I can't come up with this stuff on my own. It was just such a strong voice. But anyway, so I hope that that has been helpful. But um yeah, I mean I hope that uh I hope this gives you encouragement that we're not alone in this kind of spiritual war that we're in and, and that we are at the end. You have a certainty now. Okay, because I don't speak these words on my behalf, but like Jesus said, you know, you know, this is what the Father puts on me to s send to you. So if you deny me, you're really denying the Father who sent me, who prepared me the way to be able to share these things with the people of the earth. And so that you just know that these things are real and there's something far, far bigger going on here than just endless consumerism. <laughs> so, so be conscious, you know, stay healthy, eat well, avoid factory farming, don't support big pharma and uh, live a beautiful life. Love others. Help others. Be kind. Be like Christ. Shine, you know, let Christ live in you. You know, love him by following his commandments. Love God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And love thy neighbor as thyself, which he said is alike the first law that he gave. Because God is in all beings. God is in even the least of these. As you've done the least of these, you've done to me. So, strengthen up. Build your spiritual self you know, up, build yourself up, realize yourself, and let's, let's shine, let's shine out the darkness and move into this, uh, this fifth world, like the hope we were talking about, uh, which I recently heard from the Breadcrumbs Project about that prophecy, which is very nice. I often read American, Native American legends of the Pacific Northwest and other things like this, and so it's nice to hear, you know, God speaks to all people throughout all the ages. He speaks to his chosen ones. So, um, you know, we're, let's move up into the fifth dimension and let's, let's shine our light and blot out the darkness. Satan's heading down to the lower third into his own destruction, along with those people. Bill Gates and other people, you know, the elites and those who worship him and those who sacrifice children and those who do evil deeds and wickedness. Their time is, thank God, coming to an end. I'm tired of seeing the poison... The nastiness, the pedophilia in Hollywood, the the satanic rituals done right in front of screens with the you know the new demigods, which are the entertainment artists, the Beyonces, the you know Rihanna's, the the Katy Perry's, and all these people are waxing worse and worse, and 
everybody who's worshiping the beast, everybody who's a part of Satan or his demons, they're heading down to the lower third. The rest of us, the children of God, we're heading up. So get ready, get excited. Rejoice. This is our time. It's not a time for the judgment of the righteous. It's a time for the judgment of the wicked. The wicked wickedness should be finished upon the earth. It's disgusting. It's filthy. And I've seen enough of it myself. I'm ready to see God's kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. All right. God bless you all. Thank you for watching.